Do you know how it feels when you want to play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 but insist on only playing it on portable devices? The series isn't a stranger to handheld ports, but most of them are entirely different games because you couldn't faithfully cram Pro Skater onto a Game Boy or Game Boy Advance. The ports on these early Nintendo handhelds are still good games and well worth a play, but what if you wanted to play the original 3D Tony Hawk games while you're out and about? As a kid, I thought this couldn't be done until the PSP, but little did I know that this was already explored in 2003 thanks to Nokia's little device that tried and failed to capture the spotlight. The N-Gage is a fascinating product. It's a phone, but it's also a handheld game console. It was really ahead of the time, but it failed for a lot of reasons, including it being a phone first and foremost. Other devices like Game Boy Advance, DS, and PSP could cut down the costs as they didn't need the functionality of a phone. It was more appealing to consumers. The idea of getting a phone plan with your copy of The Sims busting out on handheld didn't sit well with people when you could just buy the same game on Game Boy Advance without worrying about the plan. But in the year 2021, none of this matters. The end gauge is a novelty first, and spoilers, this isn't my go-to way to play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 while outside, but it is a time capsule of a brief window of consumer electronics, and I love it for doing what it did. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater on the N Gage is a shockingly robust port of the original game on a screen not much bigger than a DS cartridge. At first, I thought this was a very awkward experience to get used to, but as I played more, I adapted to the number pad control scheme, and the D-pad here is nicely designed and better than you'd expect. The controls do work well, and while it's not as comfortable as playing on an actual controller, this is still an amazing setup. The sense of speed and the variety of moves at your disposal are not lost in translation to an early 2000s phone. If you've played Pro Skater 1 on PlayStation, you've seen most of what this port already has to offer. It's that good a conversion. But it isn't without its quirks, and I kind of want to focus on those. The graphics in this version do warp at the edges, similar to what you'd see in some 3D Game Boy Advance titles, and the skaters do occasionally visually clip with geometry-like rails. I say visually because the rails are still there and stopping the skater, but from certain angles it looks like they're impaled. I love this, it really does reinforce that this wasn't a simple ROM dump, but one built to work well on the hardware. They had to do a lot of tricks to make everything work perfectly. And while playing, you'd hardly notice any of those issues anyway. Well, except for the elevators in the mole section, those ones do actually distract a little tiny bit. But it's still a charming aesthetic, and I love to see this. It gives the port more identity. Other than those visual issues, this is what you'd expect. And while not quite one-to-one, -one, it's a great approximation. It's a bit more of a 1-0.8. to .8. However, Downhill Jam did seem to forget the skybox, so everything here looks like it's taking place at night, albeit in a brightly lit area. It won't impact your skating, it's just more of a visual thing. But hey, at least they didn't forget the Mountain Dew advertisement. The level wouldn't be the same without it. This is still just Pro Skater 1, warts and all. However, the HUD did have to be scaled back to fit the smaller screen real estate. Considering how revolutionary this game was, it's a blast to see it mostly unchanged. The series did improve with sequels, and while the quality of life improvements make this version feel like more of a fossil, there is a charm to it that is lost in later titles. Your score and combo potential are significantly weaker as you have less options, and while far from realistic, this is the most realistic game in the series. You'll bail from great heights, you can't keep the combo running for minutes, and you'll be unable to do the most ridiculous of moves. However, in their place, this game has more of a focus on gaps and finding bonus point icons, which are very gamey, but it helps to reward your positioning far more than its sequels. This game wants you to traverse the level and see all of it within that two minute timer, while the later games are fine with you just staying put in a small corner of a map and rocking a giant combo for it. And once you're done with your two minute runs and collect everything, you're basically just limited to free skate, just like the console versions, which is a bit of a bummer, but at least free skate is improved here with some additional bonus levels from Pro Skater 2. Not the whole lot, but these are still great additions, and this does make it my favourite version of Pro Skater 1 if we're talking about this blocky, ugly version of it. But I did have to give it that caveat because this has been surpassed with remakes. And none are quite as enthralling as the remake by Vicarious Visions. In particular the Switch version because I can play it on the toilet once my N-Gage battery depletes. 
Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 has been remade on the Switch, with not just visuals far surpassing the original, but they bring new life and identity to each of these landscapes we previously skated through. What was once a mall on its last legs is now entirely abandoned and taken over by the types of people that would skate in a dying mall. Downhill Jam may have removed its Mountain Dew ads, but now we have drones everywhere and more appropriate signage for a dam like this. The drivers in San Francisco and Minneapolis drive more erratically, which fits their reckless behavior, and the creepy alien from Roswell that used to scare me as a child is still here, and they're looking better than ever as they plead for help. But this isn't just a visual upgrade, Tony Hawk 1 was surpassed by its sequels like Pro Skater 3, and more fun and goofy experiences like Underground 2, which improved the flow and combo potential of skating, while taking the rest of the series downhill with it. Most of the options you'd expect from a game as robust as Underground 2 are here, with the exception of getting off your board. This is Pro Skater at the end of the day, not Pro Walk Arounder. Better accommodate this, the game's campaign has had its difficulty increased. But it all balances out because getting 10,000 points in the original was a challenge to new players, but here it's handed to you on a plate, so the score requirements have been adjusted to better reflect this. And in addition to that, we have extra challenges so each level isn't beaten as quickly as it would have been previously. New challenges can be level-specific things like certain gaps or collecting particular items, but there's also more score challenges and a combo challenge on each map which really put your skills to the test. And in the case of linear levels like the Mall or Downhill Jam, these repeat in on themselves so you can use up all of that two minutes without just loitering at the end of the stage. And when you've finished Classic Mode, you can't always complete it with another skater, you don't have to delete your entire save file. But if replaying Classic Mode isn't up your alley, there is the Free Skate and Rank Skate here to facilitate your cravings. Oh yeah, plus this is an entire remake of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, complete with all the additions I already mentioned. The end gauge had a few levels to skate around in, but this has all of them and their challenges are intact. This isn't just a fun bonus, it's an entire second game. The further you play this addictive game, the more unlocks you'll get for the at times amazing and also at times very limited character creator. Most clothes are very restricted on what you're allowed to customize because we can't upset the brands. And this game does give you the ability to customize yourself to look however you want on the gender spectrum, as long as those two extremes are masculine and androgynous. However, board customization is quite robust here, so you can flaunt it where it matters. There's also the skate park creator here, so you can create the park of your dreams or your nightmares. And while I don't really have any interest in it anymore, this is a nice feature and it's good to have it in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. And while this isn't something I will personally use much of, it is still a nice addition. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater as a series is a time capsule of a moment during the late 90s and early 2000s when extreme sports and skateboarding took over our lives. The N-Gage version is a time capsule, but instead of that, it's one of the early to mid 2000s experimental consumer technology. And the Switch. And the Switch version will be seen as a time capsule, as what life was like shortly before the robotic uprising because we let computers get too powerful, because how do we have games like this on the go? Regardless of how you'll play these games, you'll see fantastic level design, great challenges, and you'll hear plenty of jams. Both these versions are fantastic games that you must play, but that's because you can't go wrong with Pro Skater, well, uh, most of the time. And if you do buy these, just remember not to support Activision. But if it helps, they're not getting a cent from the N-Gage version anymore, so you can get that, it's the better version. But if you can get the Switch version without supporting them, by all means do it, as long as that does not involve robbing me.